This video is being sponsored by Ratchet Clothing. Take a look at their new Stranger Things collection. I'll put a link for their website down below in the description for this video. Okay, so before we get started, I want to speak about a poll that I put on a community post on Thursday. I asked, what would happen if in the middle of your induction ceremony, you decided to get up and walk out? Almost half the people who answered picked this answer. They let you leave and then they plot to hit you. And the second most picked answer was, someone shoots you before you get a chance to turn the doorknob. The possibility of both of these scenarios taking place is correct. First, let me say, you can refuse to be inducted, but before you walk into a ceremony. A person getting up and walking out of a ceremony would first and foremost get himself killed for the disrespect aspect. But more importantly, this is a secret ceremony that's opening up the doors to this person to enter a secret society. So the exposure to captains and other members that may be there, as well as the administration, above all, would be the reason why this person's life would be in jeopardy. I hope you all enjoyed the polls, and I appreciate everyone who participates. All right, let's get to it. Today, I'm going to be speaking about my Uncle Angelo, but who happens to really be my mother's uncle. His name was Angelo Fucci, and he was definitely a character. Angelo was good friends with and associated to Charlie and Danny Wagons, who were the Fatico brothers, but are better well known as the Fatico brothers. Carmine Charlie Fatico was an old-time Gambino captain who happened to be the very first mentor to John Gotti. In fact, Charlie and Danny Wagons are the original owners of the Bergen Hunt and Fish Club, back when it was in East New York on Fulton and Rockaway Avenue. Angelo was a bookmaker for the Fatico crew, and he was extremely intelligent, especially when it came to numbers. He did pretty good for himself, never working a day in his life, even though he carried an array of business cards, all from different businesses with his name on it. <laughs> he was able to purchase two homes in Woodhaven, Queens, one which he lived in and the other one he rented. In his prime, Angelo lived in a suite in either the Plaza or one of the other top hotels in Manhattan. Years later, he would eventually move to Woodhaven, Queens, and I would visit him at his house there. He would talk to me about the old days, and he would show me different pictures, and he had a whole bunch of stories to tell me, which I love to hear. One interesting story involved the heiress to Four Seas Food. Many of you probably buy their breadcrumbs like I do. Angelo and this young woman met, and they began dating. One night, he took her to the Copacabana in Manhattan. Back then, the Copacabana was a nightclub that famous people went to, and wise guys as well. That night, they were out with a group of people, and the woman became very drunk. Angelo took the woman back to his suite, took her shoes off, and placed her in his bed. Then he pulled up a chair next to the bed, and he fell asleep in the chair. When the woman got up in the morning, naturally, she asked Angelo what happened, and he explained that she had a little too much to drink. Then she asked if he slept in the chair all night, and when he explained that he did, she told him that you could have took advantage of me, but you're such a gentleman. After this, they fell in love and even spoke about marriage. But after the woman's family found out about Angelo's background, they demanded that she break off the relationship, and she did. Fast forward to a few years later. Angelo was sitting outside of a social club in East New York. I don't know if it was the Bergen Hunt and Fish Club. He never told me what club it was. And while he was sitting there, who comes walking over to him but the Four C's heiress? And she was so happy to see him, and she explained that she was engaged to be married, and she was going to her bridal shower, which was up the block. Angelo said that he congratulated her and wished her the best of luck. In most cases, these bridal showers are consisted all of women, and then at the end, the guy usually shows up to help with the gifts. So when her fiancé shows up, she obviously tells him that she ran into Angelo up the block. So this guy decides that he's going to go find Angelo and approach him to tell him to stay away from his fiancé. Not only doesn't he know Angelo, but he don't know that he's walking into a social club. Angelo said that by this time, he was now inside the club when the guy walked in asking for him. So he walked over to the guy and told him that he was Angelo. and What could he do for him? Angelo said that the guy only got a few words out, something to the effect of, you better stay away from my fiance. And Angelo knocked him out. I remember asking, and then what happened? He said, what happened? A few guys picked him up and they threw him out on the sidewalk. <laughs> As I mentioned, Angelo was a character. He had a friend of his who was a pharmacist, but he insisted on calling the guy Dr. Porter. 
They had known each other a very long time. And Dr. Porter was always at Angelo's house. So one day my other uncle beeps me and he tells me that Angelo was looking for me and that it's very important that I go to his house. So I get to his house and he comes to the door and tells me, hurry up, get inside. I killed Dr. Porter. <laughs> so I'm thinking the worst. Did they get into an argument? Did he stab him? Did he hit him over the head with something? So he tells me, we got to get him out of here. Your aunt is a nervous wreck, which is actually my mother's aunt, Susie. He says, we could put him in your trunk and you could get rid of him. <laughs> so by now my head is spinning and I'm trying to digest all of this. So I tell him, show me Dr. Porter. So I walk in the living room and I see Dr. Porter slumped on Angelo's couch. He looks dead, but he's breathing. So I turned to Angelo. I said, Angelo, he's alive. What happened? So it turns out, as was his norm, whenever Angelo had company over, he brought out food and wine. So Dr. Porter came over and was drinking glass after glass of wine. And at some point, he told Angelo that he didn't feel good and he needed to lay down. And he went over to the couch and laid down. Hours later, Angelo tried to wake him up and couldn't get him up and thought that Dr. Porter was dead. So what did we do with Dr. Porter? Angelo and I helped Dr. Porter walk to the back seat of my car and we put him in the car. Dr. Porter lived a few blocks away with his son and his daughter-in-law. So when we get to his house, Angelo tells me, just bring him to the door, ring the bell and leave. I said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to ring the bell and wait for somebody to come down. But he got very upset with me. He said, just ring the bell and leave him there. I don't want his family to know that he got drunk like that in my house. I guess he was worried about a lawsuit. So I helped Dr. Porter walk over to the door. I kind of prop him up by the door. I ring the bell. I walk away and we pull away. A few days later, Dr. Porter was back by Angelo's house like nothing ever happened. Another time I had a court appearance and Angelo came to court with me and he tells the judge, this young man is as innocent as the sun that's shining out today. The judge told him that he missed his calling in life, that he should have been a lawyer. My father's brother had a sports memorabilia store a few blocks away from Angelo's house. And as a teenager, I worked in the store. There was a barber shop next door that belonged to Steve the Barber. And Steve the Barber was an associate to the Genovese family, specifically Ciro Perron. My friend Johnny Santori, who used to stay by Steve the Barber, was also associated to Ciro Perron. So Angelo would come over and stay by me a little bit by the sports store and then go next door and stay with those guys in the barber shop. So one day, this kid Kenny from my high school comes into the store and him and I start getting into an argument about something that took place the previous weekend. But little does Kenny know that all these guys are sitting next door. Eventually, they all walk over to see what the commotion is. But it was Angelo who spoke to him. He asked Kenny if he's ever been to the beach, and Kenny said he had. He then asked him what could happen to a person who swims against the current. So Kenny tells him, I guess he could drown and die. So Angelo puts his hand on his shoulder and tells him, young man, you're swimming against the currents right now, so you should go home while you're still alive. The last story I'll tell you about Angelo was I was at his house one day and I was bragging to him about buying homemade dress shirts from David Nadler on 86th Street in Bensonhurst. David Nadler was the shirt maker for the entire mob. Many of you have probably noticed pictures of a lot of guys with these shirts with the long collars. That was David Nadler's shirts. Angelo smiled at me. This was a guy who used to get his underwears made from France. So he goes into his bedroom and comes back holding a bunch of shoe boxes. In them were shoes handmade for him from Italy. He said to me, you know, handmade dress shirts are nice, but you haven't made it in life until somebody hand makes your shoes. I actually have a blown up copy of the picture at the Copacabana that night. I also have another picture of Angelo, and I think the woman's in the picture. Somebody might have cut her out. And this is me as a baby sitting on Angelo's stoop. I hope you enjoyed the story about Angelo. I was thinking about him today and decided to share so many stories with you. Please hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you can do that as well. Okay, till the next time. You can subscribe to the Sit Down News blog at sitdownnews.com, and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Well, just another example in the mob you never knew about. Hope you enjoyed the story. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you can do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description to this video.